have you ever asked yourself this question why do fools despise wisdom what is the problem with fools why why do they despise wisdom uh as written in proverbs 1 7 uh, you see guys in our culture fools when we talk about a fool fools are often thought to be of a silly some some silly ridiculous and and uh, definitely foolishness is described as an an unawareness leading to trouble annoyance or offense however the biblical usage of the term fool is not primarily about someone who is silly or naive <laughs> let's let's see what the bible says in psalms 14 verse 1 the Bible says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Are you seeing? So, whosoever despises God, who says there is no God, then that one is a fool. So, an atheist is a fool. Someone who decides and says, oh, there is no God, is a fool. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's go and check... Uh, Proverbs, Proverbs 1, verse 7. Let's see what it is. It, it says here. Let, let's see what is that wisdom, that knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So for those who say that there is no God, then they don't have the fear of God because they say it's not there. So they are fools. Because the Bible here tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. So you see, the fools are despising knowledge and instructions. Okay? They are despising that and they are saying, I don't want to hear about God. Mm -mm. Then you're a fool. You're a fool. <laughs> All right. Now when you look at fools, huh, we see that uh, fools willingly reject the lord and that they hold god's wisdom in contempt they choose not to fear the lord they, absolutely they say i don't want to fear the lord let me show you psalms 126 it says i will also laugh at your calamity i will i will mock when you fear when your fear cometh you see uh, uh, not even here sorry <laughs> they all seem the same proverbs 129 for they for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. So a fool hates knowledge and he says, I don't want the fear of the Lord. I don't want it. I don't want that kind of knowledge. And they ignore the advice and rebuke of the Lord. And they refuse to walk in his wisdom and do not follow his ways. They refuse. You see, they would, they would none of my counsel. They despised all of my reproof. And instead, fools rely on themselves. They trust themselves. Let me show you Proverbs. Proverbs uh, 28, verse 26. You see those people who say, oh, I trust in myself. I trust in this scientist. I trust in this guy. Then you're a fool. That's what the Bible says. It's not my words. See, he that trusted in his own heart is a fool. But whosoever walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. You see, many people are trusting in themselves and they are trusting in their brothers and sisters and their countrymen in different things, but they don't trust in God. Look at what is happening in the world right now. People are trusting so much on people who have just read some book written 30, 40 years back or 100 years ago. And they, they despise the God who was there in the beginning who is wise above everything else? That's how people become fools. That's exactly how people become fools. Because the fool does not recognize that his own heart is desperately wicked. Do you know your heart is very wicked? Your heart is extremely, extremely wicked. Jeremiah 17, 9. I don't know if, uh, yes, I already put it here. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Are you trusting your heart? Oh, let me follow my heart. 
I hear people saying, oh, I want to follow my heart. Let me just listen what my heart is telling me. <laughs> the Bible tells you your, your heart is deceitful. It's very deceitful above all things. Above all things, your heart is very deceitful. Don't listen to your heart. And it's very wicked. Have you ever sat down and you, you want to do what is right? And you say, oh, I think I'm just feeling, let me just go and have some drinks. Let me just go and uh, do this evil thing. This is what I'm feeling. My heart makes me feel this because the heart is wicked. <coughs> the heart is really wicked. And it is no surprise then that fools are corrupt and their ways are vile. Fools are really corrupt and their ways are very vile. Let me show you this. Let me confirm to you this. Proverbs. Um, ah, actually, Psalms. Sorry. Psalms uh, 14, verse 1. Okay. Let's go back here. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Now, let me show you here. Why? Because these fools, they are corrupt. And they have done abominable works. And there is none that doeth good. Fools do nothing which is good. People who don't believe in God, they do nothing which is good. They may seem as if they are good. While the governments and the leaders and the, and the celebrities and all that and, and they try oh we have this organization this charity we do this and this but when you look at them look at the freemasonry look at uh, the, the the these illuminati kind of things they pretend so well like the mason they pretend so well in the out part of it they are really good and they are showing people oh let's do this we are helping the needy we are building schools but they are corrupt they are corrupt they have abominable works. They are worshipping Satan. And none of them does anything good. Those are fools. That's what the Bible tells us. These are fools. They are fools. <laughs> I know you may be asking, Hey, Keith, today you've just decided to talk about fools and foolishness. But let me, let me show you. Because it's really, really important to understand this doctrine of foolishness and wisdom of God. The Bible says in Psalms 53 verse 1, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Hmm. Why is God insisting so much? Why is God insisting over and over that someone who says there is no God is a fool? Different verses speaking about the same thing. Why? And he's still saying the same thing. Corrupt are they and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. So when you follow these people who don't have the fear of God in them, they are fools. Blind men leading other blind men into a ditch. Blind men fooling you to a ditch. And I'm saying this because there's a lot of deception which is happening in the world right now. Right, right now, as we live right now, there's a lot of deception because these are just fools who are leading other blind fools who are following them and they just you're just going oh i found it like this you see things are like this i don't my friends open up your eyes open up your eyes because these fools these people who don't like things of god what do they what do they like they enjoy wicked schemes they don't enjoy anything of god let me show you proverbs 10 verse 23 let me show you what these fools enjoy. Okay? Sorry. Proverbs uh, 10, verse 23. Okay? Let me show you what they enjoy. It is as a sport to a fool to do mischief. They enjoy so much doing mischief. But a man of understanding has wisdom. Wisdom comes from the Lord, my friends. But a fool enjoys mischief. He enjoys doing wicked schemes. And they are always proclaiming folly all the time. Let me show you. Fools, they proclaim folly. Okay. Proverbs uh, 12, verse uh, 23. 
they proclaim folly first let me show you what uh, folly means huh? folly means a lack of good sense or foolishness that's what they proclaim they proclaim foolishness lack of good sense see a prudent man conceals knowledge but the heart of fools proclaims foolishness a prudent man a wise man conceals knowledge but the heart of fools proclaims foolishness You see, you may be asking, why, why, why are we talking about foolishness here and wisdom? You see, when you're a fool, you will keep mocking sin. And whenever somebody tells you, you're a sinner, please repent. You're a sinner, please repent. You say, oh, I don't want to hear that I'm a sinner. I know I've, I've done nothing. I'm not a sinner. Because you're a fool. If you say you are not a sinner, then you're a, you're a fool. Let me show you. Okay, let me show you. The fools mock sin. Proverbs 14, verses 9. Fools, they mock sin and they enjoy. See, fools make a mock at sin. When you tell them, oh guys, please stop doing this. Just be good. Get saved. Get off from all those kind of things you do. <laughs> Who told you Jesus is coming? Who told you that uh, we are not supposed to do? Come on, let us do as thy wilt. Many people say, oh, let me do what I want. Come on, I have to change. If the Bible tells you one thing, but a fool tells you another thing. But you see what the Bible says here? Among the righteous, there is favor. There is favor. My friends, sometimes you may work and work and work and do a lot of things, but you ain't seeing any favor. Ask yourself, am I behaving in the way of fools? mocking sin and all the time i'm doing what is evil and i'm and i'm saying oh god please help me so that my job can succeed that my things can go well but god is asking but you you're mocking sin you're mocking things you you're doing what is wrong of course as a believer sin cannot send you to hell but sin can make you lose your relationship with god relationship in what way you that connection he's still your father yes if you're saved but that connection that feel you you start quenching the holy spirit you start grieving the holy spirit and whenever you pray you try to talk to god you feel as if he's so far because of sin if you go in the way of fools because fools these people they are very deceitful very crafty very deceitful you, you don't believe they are deceitful? Okay, let me show you. Look at this. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way. The wisdom understand their way. But the folly of fools is deceit. Mm -hmm. Do you understand now? Do you see how these people, they are deceitful? Fools are very deceitful. They will come with deceit. Uh, 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 things which they want to deceive you in different things. Are you seeing the deception which is happening in the world right now? Deception, a big kind of deception that people cannot see that you're being deceived. You're being deceived and you can't see because you're walking in the way of fools and they enjoy deceit. They enjoy deceit because I've already told you who a fool is. A fool is anyone who says there is no God. Are you seeing some of those people? They say openly that there is no God. They don't care about God. Forget about God. Enjoy these other things that you have developed. We have come up with. These fools, they despise all that. And they also despise the wisdom which is found in knowing God. This wisdom which is not found in knowing God of all wisdom. They despise that. Just look at here from verse 6. A scorner seeketh wisdom and findeth it not. But knowledge is easy for unto him that understandeth. Go from the presence of a foolish man. Go away. When thou perceiveth not in him the lips of knowledge. My friends, fools are despising wisdom. They don't want wisdom. 
They say, oh, I'd rather be a fool. Let them continue being follies, lacking good sense, lacking, you know, being fools. Let them continue doing that. You see, when we come to Romans, let me, let, let's see what Paul has to say about uh, wisdom and foolishness, okay? Romans uh, 1 verse 18, okay? I can read to you downwards to around uh, 32, okay? So here, Paul is echoing Proverbs' description of a fool, and he explains the progression of folly, okay? He explains it here. He says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God has showed it unto them. So everything that you need to know has already been put forth by God himself. The skies, the firmament, the water, the, the earth, everything God has created so that he can show you that he exists. And Paul continues, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Only a fool will say, I can't see God. I can't understand. How comes you're saying God is there and I, I can't see? But they are clearly seen. He cannot say, if, if you ask somebody, oh, you, you, you came from a monkey, huh? Okay. Do you know it's very hard to believe that you came from a monkey? It needs a lot of faith to believe that you came from a monkey than to believe that God created you. You see how foolish people, they try to explain all ways so that they can escape God because they fear judgment. But the Bible says, the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Okay? Those people who say, oh, there's no God. Uh-uh, there's no excuse, guys. Uh-uh, there's no excuse. Because that, when they knew God, these people, they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Why are they called atheists? Atheists, atheists. Taste is basically from a root word, a Greek word, which is called theos. Theos is God. I taste against God. They already know that God is there, but then they are just against him. Because when they knew God, they knew God. This atheist, they know God, but they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. They started imagining, oh, I dropped from the sky. I came from this. I, I, I came from, uh, I don't know, they call it sub, sub what soup, eight billion years ago. And I'm like, dude, were you there in eight billion years ago? Were you there to see that soup? And their foolish heart was darkened because they are fools. Big fools because they don't believe in God. They became fools. See what the Bible says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. No wonder Jesus never ceased to call these people foolish people. What is wrong with you? Don't you understand that the Son of Man is set before you, before your eyes, you hypocrites. You can discern the times. You are very keen. Jesus was telling people, you people, you can discern the, you can discern the weather forecast when it's going to rain tomorrow or the other day, but you can discern the, you can discern the times. You're big fools. Professing to be wise, you became fools. And these people, they change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man, to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Have you seen the way those people, they worship these idols? Four-footed. You look at this, just a very good looking, I don't know, is a man or is a woman. These days, they're even confused. You can't even know who is who, okay? He's just sitting there, worshiping some sand, and uh, some sand and cement, which has been created into this image. I wonder, people become fools. People really become fools. You're there worshipping something. You say, oh, oh, this is my God. And this thing cannot hear. It cannot speak. It doesn't even know what is happening. And you're there worshipping it. No wonder I despise most of these people who worship idols. I just look at them. 
If somebody is deceived, I just try to tell them, please, my friend, you're deceived. If you still believe and you still put your heart there and you say, oh, no, I'm not deceived, then you're a fool. You're a big fool. You don't even understand what you're doing. All these people, they worship idols. You just ask yourself, what's wrong with people? How could you create things which can even scare you at the night? If I find something like this in my bedroom, I'll just run. But for them, they'll say, oh, oh God has come. You see how people just uh, become fools, professing to be wise? And when you tell them, oh, this is, uh, this is not right. This is a... Uh... Look at even Pope himself here. A big fool looking at things here, worshipping some candles and... You just ask yourself, what's wrong with these people? Let's continue. They changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Are you seeing them dishonoring their own bodies? A man wants to be a woman and a woman wants to be a man. They are, de they are changing and they are saying, oh, uh, we have to love. This is how we are born. This is how... You're not born like that. You're just a big, confused buffoon. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever? That's exactly how these people are doing. Let me show you their doom. Let me show you their doom, the doom of these people who are confused fools. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. Uh huh. Vile affections. They start slowly. Oh, uh, uh, I think uh, um, I think I'm born this way. I think I'm this and this way. I think slowly, slowly they start sleeping with animals. They start doing weird things. They start even sleeping with snakes. Have you seen this kind of people? Vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use to that which is against nature. They can't understand themselves. They are confused, fellas. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lusts one towards another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was met. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. You become a delusioned, delusion. Reprobate mind is a strong delusion. You get into a strong delusion to do those things which are not convenient. Have you ever seen some people and you ask yourself, what are these people preaching? What kind of new gospel is this one? Because these people, they are done what? Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, all these things. These people are doing without understanding. You see, they are fools. Covenant breakers, they make covenant with people and break them. Wait and you see the Antichrist will be coming here with a seven-year covenant. But he will break it because he's also a fool. Without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Are you seeing the way people nowadays are unmerciful? Who knowing the judgment of God? They know God's judgment. That they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but they have pleasure in them that do them. When you try to do something good, they don't have pleasure with you. But then when you do something which is evil, they're like, hey, oh, this is our right. Oh, this person has come out. Come out from what? From truth, truth to, to darkness? From the light to darkness? That's, that's what they call coming out. I really pity these people. They don't know what they are doing. And we should pray to God and, and try to tell God, please, every day, please, these people, help them. Help them. Help them. Now, th think about what Jesus was saying. You see, Jesus contradicts 
the foolish with the wise person saying you remember what uh jesus was talking about concerning uh, the person who built his house on a, on a, on, a, on a rock and another one on sand let me read for you that story so that i can show you what jesus was trying to say when he was giving that that uh, information he wanted people to understand how you can be a fool and how you can be a wise person okay jesus said therefore whosoever hears these sayings of mine my wisdom whosoever listens to my wisdom and doth them i will liken him into a, uh, unto a wise man which build his house upon a rock a wise man build his house upon a rock mm -hmm. and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock okay you see the rain came but that house was founded upon a rock that rock the rock do you know who is the rock i'm not talking about the actor i'm talking about rock the rock is christ he is the rock of ages i saw these foolish uh, 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 catholics they are trying to say that uh, peter is the rock and the church is built upon peter peter is not a rock peter did, did peter die for anyone the rock is christ upon this rock i will build my church when Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church, he did not say Peter. He meant himself. He's the chief cornerstone. The rock, the rock that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. So if you build your house upon the rock, Jesus, then that house will never fall. Okay? Uh -huh. Now let's see. Verse 7, uh, verse 26, it says, And everyone that heareth this, sayings of mine and does and does them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which build his house upon the sand mm -hmm. this is a foolish man and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and the great was the fall of it if you don't build your house upon christ the rock this is what's going to happen the end of it what will be the end of this destruction it's going to be the road to the uh, 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 to destruction jesus says follow me i will give you life but many people they want destruction they want to build their houses on on sand and their end is destruction their end is destruction because the bible told us in in proverbs okay uh proverbs uh, 1 verse 32 the bible told us something here which you have to understand for the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them you see you think you're prospering you're a fool you're prospering with the things of this world mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. this is what's going to happen destruction is coming that's what's going to happen to you keep on following the, the things of the world Keep on following those parts of the world. You're going to be destroyed. Proverbs 10, 14 said, Wise men lay up knowledge, by the, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. The mouth of the foolish people is near destruction. And Proverbs 18, verse 7 said, A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. Guys, God wants us to know him and to live wisely. We have to know God and live wisely. Remember what the Bible tells us in John 3.16. It tells us that for God so loved the world. Let me just read to you John 3 verse 16. And I'll read to you uh, to 18. Okay. It says, for God so loved the world. God loved the world, not the world, the, 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 the world system, but he loved you who lives in this world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Many people think Jesus came to condemn us. They think that Jesus came to tell us, oh, you're bad, you're bad, you're good, you're bad, you're bad. No, Jesus did not come for that work. Look at verse 17. 
For God sent not his son into this world to condemn the world. That's not the reason why Jesus came. He came that the world through him might be saved. That because you are a sinner, you sinned against God and you are supposed to go to hell. But Jesus came so that you can have life and have it abundantly. Because he that believeth on him is not condemned. If you believe in Christ, you will not be condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Whether you like it or not, if you don't believe in Jesus, you are condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. All right? Let me tell you why people fear to do what is right. The Bible tells us this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Do you even go to a club and you find the way is so dark and you ask yourself, what are these people hiding in this darkness? Can they just drink their beers in light? Can they just, uh, because their deeds are evil. They are there doing some things behind the tables and you ask yourself, what is wrong with the world? It's because their deeds are evil. That's why they love darkness. If you go to any party, they'll say, please switch off the lights. Just put some dim light because we are very evil. We are evil people and we don't want you to see our evil deeds. That's, that's, that's the world you're living in. That's the world that we live in. Okay? Ephesians. Ephesians 5. Uh, verse 15, I read to you uh, down to 20. It says, See then that you walk circumpensely, not as fools, but as wise. I don't know if I've mentioned the word clearly, but you can read it. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeem the time. The days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but, under but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Be not drunk with wine, wearing in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit, okay? Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Guys, let's not be fools. Let's walk in righteousness. I'll read to you uh, a couple of other verses. I know I have so many verses, but uh, let me just read a few, okay? Just a few verses here. Let's see what the Bible says here in James 4, 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist the deceiver and his schemes and his, uh, and his uh, ministers because Satan has ministers who are out to deceive you. Resist him together with his ministers, and he will flee from you. He will flee. Trust you me, he will flee. And draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. But if you don't want to humble yourself, hmm, Okay, it's okay. You will walk in the ways of the devil. And the devil, he comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. There are so many verses I can read you concerning this. Just go and check First Peter 5, 6 to 11. He talks about humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in time. Just go and read about that. Because we see God promises us, okay, God promises us. Uh, he promises us that uh, he's going to keep safe those who listen to him and those who walk in wisdom. Just like the Bible says in Proverbs 133, that whosoever hearkens unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. And also Proverbs 28, 26, which says, he that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. Okay? The one who will trust in his own art is a fool. But whosoever walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. Now, God wants us to keep safe and to listen to him in his own wisdom. And if we need wisdom, 
if you need wisdom god tells you just ask of him in james 1 5 says but if any of you lacks wisdom let him ask ask of god who gives all generously and without reproach and it will be given to him ask of him tell god god please give me your wisdom i need to understand i need to understand a couple of things here and there god i need to understand who you are i need to understand the end times i need to understand what's happening in the world lord i need to understand what are these people doing to us lord i need to understand what the gospel is please lord i need to understand who you are is it true that you are there god reveal to me pray to god just tell him god please reveal yourself to me show me if you really have been there from the beginning god is going to reveal himself to you pray ask god for wisdom seek him and you will find him trust you me he will you will find him he will come and show himself to you okay god will give it to you willingly and without reproach instead of becoming fools who despise wisdom we can learn to love wisdom by repenting and fearing the lord building a foundation on the solid and lasting wisdom of god instead of destruction fools can have hope when they put their faith in christ jesus and follow his ways just as the bible says in romans 5 1 to 5 it tells us that we are justified by faith and we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ by whom we also have access by faith into the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of god and not only so but we glory in tribulations also so we don't we don't just glory in in uh, the good times we also glory in tribulations sometimes when things get really rough ask god for wisdom tell god hey god now eh, things are really tough for me please tell me the truth just go and read uh, maybe i can give you three verses you can go and read john 15 1 to 11 where god speaks that uh, he tells us that he's the true vine uh, the, the whole story and the, his father is the husband man and every band branch which does not bear fruit he takes away just go and read all that story go and also read uh that is john 15 1 to 11 go and read uh, hebrews 11 verses 1 and understand what faith is okay faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen just go and read about faith and understand and also hebrews 12 from verse 1 to 2 this is all where it speaks about how we are compassed with a great cloud of witnesses and we should lay every weight and sin which does so easily beset us and run with patience because this, the race is set before us guys let's seek godly wisdom let's seek to please god let's seek to do what is right godly wisdom gives us the understanding and gives us salvation you can have uh, knowledge but lack wisdom knowledge is just basically knowing that jesus died at the cross but wisdom or understanding is knowing that jesus died for your sins that is knowledge wisdom i mean knowledge tells you that there's a man called jesus who died that that's okay everybody knows that catholics they know islam they know buddhists they know atheists they know that there's a guy called jesus who died at the cross that's knowledge but wisdom is basically understanding why Jesus died. Jesus died for your sins. So that if you'll believe in him, you'll not perish, but you'll have everlasting life. He wants you to believe in him so that you'll have everlasting life. Do you believe in him? Do you believe that Jesus died for your sins? That it was not in vain that he laid his life? When you understand that, then now you've come to the knowledge of the truth. And that truth is found in Jesus Christ. All you need to do is understand that fact and believe. And then you confess to God and tell him, Jesus, now I understand without any shadow of a doubt that you died for my sins. You were buried and rose again. The third day according to the scriptures. I receive you in my heart. Please be my Lord and Savior. I receive that payment, that atonement of sin. 
by faith. And for sure, my friends, after you do that, you're saved, sealed, and sanctified unto the day of redemption. Get wisdom. Wisdom which comes from God. Understand him and know him. If you enjoyed these videos, please give them a like. And also you can share to your friends. And also subscribe to watch more videos. And check on the description below. We have a couple of other channels outside YouTube. Where you can also get some good info. And share also to your friends who are not on YouTube and, and the like. God bless you and have a good time. See you in the next one.